We ain't backing down. Spider two wide banana. The line slides to the left. Watch the young back cut down the defensive end, but there's a beautiful banana. There's three quarterbacks in this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever one don't, will back them out. Period. Cut and dry. Next. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Welcome to the TW Podcast. Today is uh, June 11th. Um, it is a balmy 50 degrees, but sunny out there today. Um, you know, uh, this week's podcast, I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk kind of about an update on football, um, and then I'm going to go into a new segment called Things That Annoyed Me This Week, okay? As well as, you know, we always have our staples of um, Netflix Movie of the Week, um, as well as Three and Out, so... Um, but should be a pretty good show um, coming up for you today. Um, you know, next week um, I'm going to have some guests on the show, so uh, it should be a little bit more than just you guys out there listening to me talk. Uh, so uh, get ready for next week, and I hope you guys enjoy this week's episode. But here we go. Let's get into the podcast. All right, let's give you a little football update here. All right. Uh, we're sitting here in the, oh, about the second week of June. Um Football uh, was up a question for quite a while. It still kind of panners back and forth of what may happen. Um, but as of right now, everything's like a green light. So, um, you know, it looks like some of the NFL teams are going to be getting back to uh, some schedule here soon. Uh, they don't have the specifics yet. Um, but it doesn't look like they're going to slow down or... Uh, hold off the season um, there's still a lot of rules and regulations that have to go around because it's, it's going to come down to state by state because um, you know the governors are going to be in charge of their state and if they think having a crowd uh, is too early for their state they're not going to do it and that's completely understandable uh, that is up to everybody's health not just for football standards so if you got to go play uh, in an empty arena that's okay you know, as a as a a fan uh, and coach, you know, play, not playing in front of fans would be rather uh, disappointing. Like that's a big part of the game is you're going out there to put a product on the field for people to have enjoyment, especially if you're going to the game. Um, you know, NFL. I understand they put them on TV, and then most of the people who are watching those games are not at the game. But um, there's just something about being in the game at a game. The atmosphere, whether it's football, baseball, whatever it is, it's fun to be at a game. You know, watching it on TV is kind of, nah, I'm, I'm, watch, I'm on my phone, do, 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 and I'm watching. You know, you're not fully invested, you're not fully paying attention like you would be if you were there. I mean, baseball's your prime example. I could watch a baseball game on TV, I have no problem, I enjoy baseball. But I, I, I can't sit there and watch every single pitch for, you know, nine innings. Like, no, I can't do that at home. If I'm at a game, I want to have the time of my life. I want to sit there. I want to watch every pitch. I'm going to have conversations with who's ever with me, have a good time, have a couple soda pops, have myself a hot dog or two, maybe that little ice cream in a helmet deal. Like, I want to have fun. I want to make a deal of it. Um but if you got to watch the thing at home, it's just not uh, very fun. Um, but, you know, we kind of get back to the updates. You know, the NCAA, um, you know, each division for football sounds like it's going to be uh, different, uh, how they're going to do it. I know uh, the Division ones are starting to open back up and bring their kids in to start training them. Uh, their biggest uh, concern in the world is that these players are not going to be in shape uh, to be able to do uh, practice or get through them and they're worried about player safety and all these things which is admirable and noble but I want to tell you guys in Division 1 here down in D3 we do that every single year all right uh, a majority of you know sometimes a majority of freshmen might play so a lot of those kids didn't sit there and pound the pavement and get in great shape when they came into camp like sometimes you got to get in shape in camp same thing with high schools like 
people have been uh, doing two weeks of camp and getting people ready for football in a shorter amount of time. What those guys are worried about is the advantage that they had uh, will be gone because now these guys might be, you know, they didn't go on there and get all their weights and their, their running in and all the specific stuff, and now all of a sudden they're not going to be as good of a player if they don't do those things. And part of that is true. They're not going to be as good, but guess what? So I mean, even playing field across the board, you know, because everybody couldn't go in there and work out. Like, those are the rules. So, um, but, you know, um, uh, Campbell there at Iowa State, I, I, I loved it. He's got a D3 background. He played at Mount Union, coached at Mount Union for a while. And when they asked him the question, like, hey, you know, w- are you worried about uh, not being able to train your guys uh, and, and come in for football? And he's like, well, a lot of D1 coaches are probably going to be all upset about it, but that's all we do when I was in D3. So I, I know the model. I know how to do it. So, you know, good for you, Coach Campbell. I loved it. Uh, it was a good one because it's true. You can do it. It's not uh, ideal to do it that way, but that's the way it goes. Um, but it sounds like they're going to go without a hiccup. Uh, it sounds like they're all reporting here in June to get the kids back on campus. Most of those people are going to probably have to quarantine for a week. Um, I know personally I think we're going to have to quarantine for a day or two, uh, whatever it is. Uh, they're going to give me the rules specifically for what we have to do when our kids get on campus here for fall camp. Um, but Division II, uh, basically what they did was um, said that they moved the minimum contest down uh, to seven, uh, which, you know, if teams decided to, they could, you know, basically if you want to cancel your non-conference schedule uh, to help alleviate budgets and or help not spread the virus um, so, you know, and basically the same thing kind of trickled down to Division Three was the same rules D2 did. Um, you know, we're not getting kids on campus right now working, um, you know, working out, getting ready. Um, a lot of that aspect is put on those players to make sure they are coming in in condition and you know, work out all summer to make sure they're ready to prepare uh, for the season. Like, that's, that's a big part about being an athlete is making sure you are prepared. So... Um, you know, that's kind of that update on that end. Um, you know, for us, right now, it looks like everything's a green light. You know, a uh, few things have changed in our policy uh, uh, for the pertains of uh, getting into the dorms, uh, when these kids will be going home, kind of the actual school schedule is going to be a little bit different format than it has been. Um, you know, so those the later sports will have a little bit of a, di- you know, some issues of keeping kids on campus because I still got to play games in December. Because what we're going to do is probably we're going to send our kids home after or at Thanksgiving break and finish the last two weeks online, which will be mostly their exams and final uh, things to prepare for, um, so they don't have to come back after break. Um, so I mean, there's going to be a few. Di- there's going to be a little bit different format, um, you know, and it should be good. So, um, you know, those teams have got to stay on campus because they got to play games, you know, the women's basketball, men's basketball, hockey's, uh, all those, they'll still be around on campus um, and having to do things. But, you know, everything looks pretty good for the fall here. Um, doesn't look like things are getting canceled. You know, we have not canceled any games. Um, you know, we're looking forward to the 2020 season as well as I'm sure everybody is, I think. Um, this pandemic has put a lot of time in people's hands and people are ready to uh, get back out there and get excited about something, something that gets me out of the house now, right? Let's go out and do things. And as the, you know, I, I'm not quite sure what the state of Michigan is going to do as it pertains to the people in the stands as of right now. Like, I know we haven't canceled any games. We haven't deterred our schedule or anything like that. Um, but, you know, as of right now, I think the governor's got up to 100 people uh, can be out. Um, I expect that to keep loosening up, loosening up, and as soon as she gets to the point where, you know, we're at a thousand or more, you know, now you can start getting people at your games. Now you can start having good, um, you know, good times. Like it's there's something about just being in a crowd. I don't care if it's a football game, a concert, um, a fair. Like, you know, some people hate crowds. Uh, I I tend to do okay in crowds.
sometimes. All right, I'm not perfect. I, you know, I have a little bit of uh, what the hell are these people doing? Why they got to get in my way or whatever the hell it is? But, um, you know, but I enjoy the crowd. Like, uh, like the whole thing. Like the thing that probably throwing me off the most. You know, it's getting a little off topic for football. But you know, I'm a guy that likes to go to the movie theater and go see a, a movie at the movies. Because it gets my up, as I said earlier, like, I'll play around on my phone if I'm at home. If I'm in the movie theater, my phone doesn't leave my pocket. I'm, like, bought into the movie, the dark, the huge screen. You know, there's other people in there you're experiencing the movie with. You got your popcorn. You're just having a good time, all right? So, you know, those, if, if I had lost the movie theater, I would, I would be upset because I know I could never fully pay attention at home. There's just something about being at home. That I'm at home, I can do whatever the hell I want to. So, um, you know, there's that. But um, you know, just something about going out and uh, doing something with other people, being around other people. That social aspect. You know, not everybody's down for that social aspect, but you know, that's one of those things that I would say majority of people like to do. They like to go out. They like to have fun. So, um, the way things are looking, though, looks like it's gonna be pretty good for this uh, this fall. It looks like. Nothing's going to be canceled. Everything's going to be good to go. Um, but you never know what, you know, if there's a second round of COVID. Could get, you know, I, I'm being optimistic, but then I hit you with a pessimistic kind of response after it, okay? You know, it's still kind of up in the air. You don't know what could happen. But right now, we're full train ahead, um, and we're getting excited for 2020. All right. Now, this is going to be uh, uh, a new segment uh, to the podcast. I'm probably not going to do it every week, uh, but whenever I have a week of uh, things that uh, get to me, we'll do this. But uh, these are this is going to be called the things that annoyed me this week. All right. And some of these will be from last week. It will kind of mash together. All right. Uh, I want to start off by talking about my uh, vet visit uh, last week. All right. Last week I had to take my dog Gus. If people out there don't know, I have an old English bulldog. Um, whose name is Gus, and Gus has glycoma, and Gus has been suffering from a little ear infection lately, uh, so we took him in. Um, my appointment was for 11 o'clock. Now, with COVID-19 rules in effect, uh, I had to uh, basically wait in my car until it was 11. Then I had to go knock on the door, the side door, uh, to get in for the appointment. Um, so uh, I go up there, I knock on the door, so I'm here to uh, Gus's appointment. Uh, they're like, all right, here we go. Let's get in there. You know, walk me into my room, all happy. Uh, weigh the dog, get in the room. Um, now I'm sitting in the room. You know, uh, when you make appointments in the world, all I know is that you keep your appointments. That is my number one uh, golden rule. Uh, don't be late. Don't do whatever. Um, but doctors and vets and all them, they don't they don't really care about that. So, um, you know, I get in there at eleven. I am sitting there. I'm on time. Uh, first 15 minutes passes. I'm like, oh, well, you know, maybe they're busy out there today. Um, then all of a sudden I'm sitting there for 30 minutes. And I'm looking at my dog Gus. And Gus looks distraught. Like, why am I stuck in this little room? Uh, let's get out of here. Uh, the 45-minute mark hits. And uh, there's a little itch and, and rage kind of building up inside me so uh, I opened up the door and the door was right off the lobby and I was like you guys forget about me in here and they're like oh no no we'll be there shortly 15 minutes later I was sitting in one room for an hour straight no human contact like an hour an hour now they decide they want to roll up in there uh, and, and, and they start the preliminary uh, deal here it's not just like you know, the vet comes in, looks at your dog, and they're like, all right, it's all sweet. Let's go. No, 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 no. I wish it was that easy. So now they got, like, their vet tech or whatever the hell they call them. Uh, she comes in, and she starts doing the normal ask me 18,000 questions about the dog's history, um, everything about him. You know, does he like shredded wheat? I don't know. I've never fed him shredded wheat. Like, these are the questions they ask you. 18,000 questions, and the thing I hate about going to the vet is they always try to make, make you feel like you, you've been a, par- like a terrible pet parent, 
like at some point like it, it's not like they intentionally do it but eventually it comes off like oh you haven't you haven't done that like this uh, I'll get into it here in a second but you know she comes in does her little stick and now I'm just waiting I mean, it's back to wait she leaves I'm waiting for like another 15 20 minutes in there for the vet and I am just boiling under my skin boiling and Finally, the vet walks in, and here kind of comes the story I was talking about uh, where they make you feel bad. They're like, uh, you know, our other dog, Lilo, she is, um, she's allergic to just about everything. So uh, we have to have a grain-free diet, so that's what Gus has been on. They've been on a grain-free diet forever. Well, she comes in instantly. She's like, oh, I saw in here that your dog wasn't on a, uh, is on a grain-free diet, and that's really, you know, the, uh, the American Heart Association just came in and said, that's bad. That's bad for dogs. It's like killing dogs out there. And I'm like, okay. He's been on it. Does he look healthy? And she like listens to, oh, you got a strong heart, don't you, buddy? And it's like, yeah. Why are you trying to get me to go buy new food, to change the routine, and do all these things? Like it, it just like instantly made you look like made you feel like you were a bad pet parent. Cause like, of course I want my dog to live as long as he can, but. The reality is the dog's going to eventually, you know, pass on at some point. It's not like I get to have him for 45 years, and it's great. You know, I get him for a 12-year, hopefully 12-year time to a 15-year time frame. So when he's closing in, his, you know, it might be his birthday is tomorrow. June 12th will be Gus's birthday. He'll be 8 years old. But, um... So that goes on. She looks at the ear. She does all that stuff. And then all of a sudden she's like, oh, well, you know, he needs to get his rabies shot again. So we're going to have to add that on. I'm like, because legally we can't let him leave here without it. And I'm like, okay. Just, just okay. And at that point, you know, I've been there for an hour and a half. And then maybe five, ten minutes later, the lady comes back, the vet tech, she's like, oh, I gotta bring him back there, I gotta clean out his ears, and give him this, and give him that, and give him a shot. I'm like, okay. Legit, 20 more minutes later, they bring him back. And, you know, his ears are just covered in goop. Apparently it's an antibiotic he's gotta be on, but they hand me my dog, and I just, I, I was flabbergasted. Then, uh, what was really even more funny, they wouldn't let me just go up to the the desk to pay. They sent another, la the third lady in to come and get my payment. And she was like, oh, this is the rundown of what happened today. And you just, like, look at it. You're like, oh, yeah, you guys, you guys charge me for this. You charge me for that. Oh, that's great. You know, when do I get my time back? Like, I don't think people understand, like, time is money. Like, let's say, uh, you know, like, currently... I had my regular job. It was it's the fall. I got I got games. I got practice. I got all this stuff going on. I'm expecting going to the vet might be a 45 minute max, 45 minute maybe an hour. You know, a lunch break. I was there for two hours. Like what the hell? Like, come on. It doesn't take two hours to figure out what's wrong with your dog, especially when it's an ear infection. It's like give him the stuff. Let's get out of here. It's all good to go. All right. So I guess his first ear infection, and I don't know how to handle it. It was a blatant waste of my time. Absolutely made me angry. That was the number one thing that annoyed me this week, or, well, technically last week. Uh, the other thing this week, all right, this week happened last night. All right, I was down at the Crest. I was getting myself, um, you know, my stuff that I need from the gas stations. Um, so I'm sitting there. I'm not sitting. I'm standing. And, you know, bringing my, I'm getting rung up. And all of a sudden, this lady walks in. And I was like, oh, no mask, no nothing. All right, well, that's up to you. So whatever. And legit stands right behind me. Now, this lady might have been 50. Actually, I would say 55, 60, somewhere in that range. She's an older lady. Not saying people out there that are 55, 60, that's old, whatever. But she was an older lady. So in my mind, she knew better. So I decided that I was going to, I was so annoyed by it, I, like, I looked at the cashier, and she was, like, looking at me, and, like, I was a little mad at her that she didn't enforce the rule, like, tell her, like, hey, you got to stand six feet back, got that little X we put on the ground there, ma'am. No, no. 
So I had to take matters into my own hands. So what I did was, I turned around. And I just, I kind of made it look like I was about to cough. And I just kind of coughed, but like into my, my arm, but kind of out at her. <laughs> I kind of launched one at her, you know. And she instantly got mad at me. She said, what are you doing? There's a there's this thing going on. I go, yeah, you're supposed to stand six feet back. This is a little warning shot. Like, get yourself back. Like, understand, uh, the reason why, you know, you wear a mask and you do these things and all this kind of stuff is, is partly to protect other people. Now, if the other people that need to be protected don't really care, I have a big problem with that. And it was very annoying that she just decided to stand right behind me, not have a care in the world. Like, legitimately, I could almost feel her breathing on my neck is how close she was. And she was, like, panting. And, like, it was just weird. It was like, why are you such in a hurry at a gas station? Like, chill out. Everything will be fine. Just let me pay for my stuff, and I'll be gone. You don't need to close the distance between, you know, being from six feet to one foot away from me that five feet was going to make it faster for you. So, ma'am, whoever you are, please, please, please figure out the six-foot rule. It's probably going to be in effect for a while. I don't care that we're up here in a Keweenaw and you feel like you don't need to wear a mask and you don't need to do something. Do it. I'm sick of it, all right? All right, now I want to get on to the weather this week, all right? This week. Hell, you would have thought we were sitting here and Late July, my fellow, you're in California, for the way it felt. Monday, Tuesday, it was like 90s. Hell, Tuesday, it was about 94, 95. Sweating profusely. It's not like I enjoy super hot weather, but it was out there. So, I was relatively happy. Then Wednesday came along. Wednesday, wake up. Sound of rain, which, you know, it's kind of soothing. I don't mind the rain. But this is like a torrential downpour. Like, whoosh, you know, a storm is a brewing. And legit, the weather dropped from 95 degrees on one day to like 45, 48 degrees. Right now, it's Thursday here in Hancock, and it was a balmy 50 degrees out right now, okay? So, Michigan weather, you have to be... It's just per usual. It's UP weather. You can be so gl glorious and beautiful one day and then just take that away from you and give you a cold, wet, rainy day. Make you feel like you're back in March. That is what you did this week. Okay. The other thing about the state of Michigan right now, I'm going to tell you, is driving me absolutely up the wall. I was always told there's two seasons in Michigan. There's construction season and construction season okay like the, I don't think that a road in the state of Michigan is ever not being worked on like I only say this recently because I'm up here in the second story of my house the the big road that's behind my house which is 41 basically heading up north they've decided uh, then it's time for this to get repaved, which it, it probably needs it. You know, I see a lot of other potholes that need to be taken care of that have been taken care of, but whatever. Uh, so this whole hill is going to get redone. These orange construction barrels go out like four weeks early, so they're already like ruining traffic, but no work's getting done. And as of this morning at like 7.30, when they had like their big rigs rolling down the street and making a lot of noise. And then like... You know, at least it's not like a stop and go. Like when you're at, when you're on like a road trip, and all of a sudden there's that person uh, standing there with their little, uh, the act of God sign, I like to call it, you know, like stop and go. Like you can stop or you can go. Like that, that person's got a lot of power and they feel very, very adamant about how powerful they are. And reality, the fact when you roll up on them, and I'm not going to say nine times out of ten. I want to say a good 70% of the time. I see that person just 
taking the longest drag off some cigarette, enjoying their day, chugging a Mountain Dew, eating a lunch, just hanging out, listening to their own music. Like one time I pulled up, had my windows down, it was a hot summer, and they were just cranking their tunes, enjoying, in, like legit enjoying their time. And I was just like, wow, this, is, this seems like a pretty legit job, all right? Just hanging out, smoking, on the job, eating, on the job. I was, I was a little jealous, you know, I can't even say I'm mad about that, I was just a little jealous. I don't smoke, but just, just jealous to have that kind of freedom, all right? They have that kind of freedom out there. Oh. All right, the last thing, all right, this just happened a few, right about an hour and a half ago, all right? So... We're my wife and I were up at uh, up at the hospital to get our um, basically our two week checkups uh, for the baby, and this time, um, you know, I got asked the question like, "Hey, you got this vaccine? You got the T dab? You got the T dab?" For one, I just I I didn't know what the T dab was. It could have been a new dance move that I don't know. Um, but, you know, they're like, do you got the Tdap? And I'm like, I, I don't know what that is. They're like, well, this, this, and this, you know, for tetanus. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got my tetanus shot, like, probably like eight years ago or something to renew it. And they're like, ah, well, let me look at the immunization records on you. What's your name again? And I'm like, oh, oh God, <laughs> they knew my name. So they go back. And for some reason, there is like, uh, you know, my immunizations are all out there. I didn't even, you know, I didn't know that kind of stuff was public knowledge but hell what do I know I'm a football coach um, so they go back there they look it up They're like oh you don't got it uh, and we recommend that everybody that's going to be in contact to a baby has to have it and it's like okay They're like we could do it right now we could do it today I was like alright sweet whatever so you know it's all hunky dory I'm all happy and whatever and she comes in she gives my wife one because she needs to get one apparently women need to get it at every single pregnancy it does not matter if you're up to date, they give you one every pregnancy. So she got hers. I got mine. And it was the first shot I had in a long, long time. And, you know, I kind of braced myself for the needle because I'm a little, you know, I just sharp objects kind of freaked me out. And I, I didn't even feel it go in. And I was just like, oh, this is over. She's like, yeah, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be a sore today. And I was just like, well, sweet. It's probably just be normal for me. But I, I can feel a little bit. And it's only been like an hour and a half into this thing. But um, so that went down. Uh, but it was the after effect, the aftermath where they're like, oh, yeah, when you leave, make sure you stop by and give your information to the people at the desk. It's like, okay. Then we get to the desk. This is what drove me nuts. It's not the fact I need to get a vaccine. Like, sure, I need to do this for my child. I'm going to do it. Um, it's the questions you get asked. All right? Like, the first thing, I was talking to my wife on the way home about it. I was like, the first question to me was, what's your marital status? Uh, and like a part of me just wanted to go like what the hell is it to you like if I'm married single divorced whatever it is like what does it matter to my health health like it has no bearing on anything no bearing and it just kept driving me nuts just the question are you male or female uh, you know there's 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 multiple genders out there now as you know, uh, as I see, uh, and, you know, I just looked at her, I'm like, male? Like, just these, these, these questions that I, I just view as, as being ridiculous, like, what do you need to know my ethnicity for, at all? Like, what do you need, what, what do you need my email for? I gave you my phone number. That it's probably the best form of communication to get a hold of me because that's on me all the time. Like they always ask you questions they don't need, but they want because they want to categorize you. And I hate that. I hate to categorize. But you know those are those are the things that really kind of annoyed me this week. Uh, I had to get the, the vet story. I just had to get off my chest. I, I the the blatant disrespect of my time really made me upset because I know if I would have rolled up uh, an hour two hours late to that vet appointment they would have looked at me like I was crazy like you can't get in, the, the vet can't see anymore, you missed your appointment 
Well, if I would have showed up two hours later, I would have been probably about on point for my appointment. So, you know, just, duh. That's the things that annoyed me this week. All right, let's start wrapping up the podcast today. Um, You know, let's get right into Netflix Movie of the Week. Uh, This week I decided not to do a movie, okay? Uh, I recently watched the show. There's a series on there called Space Force. All right, with Steve Carell as the lead, uh, John Malkovich is in it as well as he's kind of like, um, he's a big character in the show as well, um, and it's a comedy. Um, it's actually uh, kind of a play on uh, Donald Trump's. Uh, you know, he's going to have his own space force, his next militarized unit of the uh, U.S. military, um, and it's kind of just uh, playing with it and kind of having a laugh with it. Um, to try to have a race to the moon, back to the moon, um, and do all these things, and they're competing with China, and uh, it's a funny show. Um, Steve Carell, just spot on, you know, just doing a great job. You know, him and John Malkovich's character have a lot of like playful banter back and forth. Um, you know, it's a it's a funny show. Um, you know, uh, my wife watched it, and enjoyed it. And she got, there was a couple moments in there where it was like, I, I always make fun of my wife because I always hear, aww, in a show, like all the time. Like, there's like one little soft moment. Like, this is a comedy, and I don't know where she either A, feels bad for a person, or she thinks it's like uber cute, and she's like all about it. Um, but they do have those moments uh, in there where they kind of uh, have some serious issues uh, as it pertains to being a human being. And, as well as just kind of the comedy of, yeah, we're a space force and it's undercover and nobody's supposed to know about it and blah, blah, blah. Good. It's a good little flick. Uh, it's not a flick. It's a series. Uh, so go out there, check it out. I think it was about 10 episodes, so only like a half hour each. Um, so it's a pretty easy watch. It's not like committing to a show that's hour-long episodes and there's eight, 13 episodes. Now you really invest in this kind of a quick watch. Uh, and it's worth a good laugh, all right? Uh, but let's get ourselves into three and out. All right, first down. All right, the MLB draft is this week. And well, you know it's the MLB draft. Like I always kind of laugh when it's the MLB draft because um, if there is a player that's a generational player, we know about it. Uh, if there's not, it's not like it's a, a huge deal. Most of these guys, uh, you know, some of them. I'm not gonna say all of them. Most of them don't go to the bigs right away. Most of these guys are going to be getting their contract. Some guys get drafted and don't come to baseball. I mean, that's the thing about it. I know, especially in football, there's always a kid that's usually a quarterback, was a great pitcher in high school, got drafted out of high school, um, but wants to go play quarterback because he got a scholarship. So he turns down that contract, goes and plays sports. You know, they still own the rights to him if he ever decided to play. Um but I always think it's kind of funny because baseball um, is developmental. You know, you're going to go to the developmental league before you even get on the mound or uh, stand at the plate. So most of the time, not not all the time. Sometimes there's generational players that came running, just come right in, and they're ready to go. You know, it's a little bit different than football in that NFL draft. So, but the MLB drafts here. If you want to watch it, go and watch it. I'm probably, I'll be honest with you, I'm probably not going to. All right. Uh, second down. All right. I. Uh, for Christmas this year, I got a uh, the DNA Ancestry uh, deal. So i kind of do a little pitch for Ancestry.com here. Um, I got the cotton swab. Bait, or It's a spit cup. You gotta, I had to spit this thing to a line, send it in. All during COVID-19, I sent it in. It seems a little crazy to send your spit to somebody, but I did. Um, so uh, I got my results back. And to be honest with you, I was, I'm a little surprised, right? Because 39% of my genetic makeup is from England, Wales, Northwestern Europe. This is all one together, okay? So, uh, and the next closest 35% is French. So, um, that one kind of hit me a little close, you know, like, you know, as we were, we're taught in, in school about uh, the French, and especially when it comes to war times, they're the ones that are usually... The last ones to the party, or the uh, you know the first ones to leave the party. So um, you know, I was a bit 
a bit of a slap to me a little bit. Um, but I understand, like, the French really comes from, uh, like, French-Canadian, uh, where my family came from Canada. Um, so, but there's also just, you know, kind of the other mix, basically 5% and lower, you know, Swedish, Finnish, uh, German, um, you know, Ireland, Scotland, um, kind of uh, a mixed bag, as you will. So it was kind of unique to see. The cool thing about it is you can kind of uh, start your own family tree. So I kind of got, but basically, you know, you gotta fit, you gotta know some information about your family before you get it started. Because if you don't know the people, it's not like they're just gonna instantly pop up. Um, so basically, I got all the way tracked to my great grandparents at this point. Uh, then I had to pay an up fee to get you know the other stuff, but uh, pretty unique because. Like there's a picture of my great grandmother that I didn't even know about in Georgiana, and uh, they have a picture of her. I never seen a picture of her, so I got to see a picture of her. Um, you know, there's some random pictures on there um, of the people, usually uh, from an obituary or something like that, or you know, they have uh, resources depending on documentation, everything like that, where they look up the names, and so that's kind of where um, it all comes from. Now I did find out. Uh, recently from my mom that my grandfather uh, when his family came to the country had a different last name so I've got to be like aware of that last name now so you know it's uh, it's a little bit of fun uh, kind of look at your, your, your family history and kind of going back and see where everything was from so um, there's that alright let's get a third down okay third down alright I want to talk about uh, the Black Lives Matter okay um the biggest thing about this, like, everybody's got to understand, okay, you know, like, for me, I was, I was born a white person, okay, at no point in time can I ever say uh, to somebody of a different uh, race that I understand what happens to them on a daily basis, whether that's police brutality, just open racism, whatever it is, I, I've never experienced that. But the best thing I can do is I can educate myself and I can listen. Um, you know, I was raised properly. I had never had this idea or notion like people are people. It doesn't matter what color they are, what sexual orientation they are, what nationality, whatever they are, does not matter. We are all different and that's great. Okay? And that's what makes us unique um, but right now um, you know it's time for a change there's time for a change in the world um, you know especially when it comes to this police brutality I mean this is this is ridiculous um, you know so and, and what stinks is there's there's some great cops in the world don't don't think all cops are bad but you know there's a few guys out there that are just terrible, terrible human beings. And I know it's like that in probably every profession in the world. But it's it's not right. I stand. Black Lives Matter. I'm here for everybody. I support everybody. But right now, it's that time for this to change. Um, you guys got my full support and love. So, um, you know, but that's, uh, that's podcast this week. Next week, uh, I expect to have a... Uh, two guests next week, so uh, I got a friend named Keith coming on. Uh, we're probably going to talk a little bit about some basketball, maybe some NHL a little bit. Um, and then uh, we're going to have my brother, Joe Bear, on the radio. Uh, well, not really the radio, the podcast, but he's. Uh, I just told him about 15, 20 minutes ago he was going to be on the podcast. He seemed a little nervous. So, uh, But I'm going down there this weekend see my nephews and my nieces, uh, as well as my brother and my mom. So, um, pretty excited, but me and my brother are going to sit down to a podcast, so who knows what's going to happen. We'll probably be sitting in his garage. He'll probably start uh, going off the wall about hunting and fishing, I assume. But who knows? Who knows what this guy wants to talk about? I'm going to let him kind of have uh, what he wants to do. But tune in next week. Look forward to uh, seeing you guys next week, and uh, have a good one.